Okay, it's getting close. So now I'm going to match the top back up here to ground floor. Double check out my view. Okay, so it looks like it's got the same overhang. And I'm guessing that's around 120. Let's have a look at the sketch and what I decided back there. I didn't, so let's go with about 120 there. Create, so still in the same family. Extrusion. Now this time I'm going to pick these lines because that should match. I remember that that had an offset of 40. I'm going to use the offset command using pick lines again of 120. Again, I could have just drawn these as straight lines and then adjusted everything using temporary dimensions. And even though I'm drawing lines, it remembers that there was an offset. So I'm just deleting that and doing that again. And I'm hitting escape. It keeps the same command, but escape stops it continuing that chain of lines. And I'm using trim again. Tidy that up. All right, this time, okay, 1000. So that's a lit. It's going to start at 1120 and go up to 1150. It's the MDF that we created before. Big green tick. Alright, I'm going to have a look at that in elevation. So again, the trickiest bit here is just trying to understand the difference between where everything comes from in your work plane. So working all of these out makes life a whole lot easier. Working these out at the beginning and having a little sketch so that when you're plugging them in, those numbers are very easy. You're not going back and forth and adjusting one and then the other. Well, the last thing I need to do is to add the black panels. One, two, and three. That looks like it should line up with the edge of there. I thought they looked like about 70 by 40. It looks like it sits flush with the front edge and that there's one over there, one edge here, and then one along the front. I guess so there's one mimicking that on the other side there. I could do this very easily in plan by drawing a rectangular prism there and there and here and there and there. However, what I could also do, just because I want to introduce you to the work plane, is create them in a front elevation. So if I create, I might just need to finish the model, I think. If I create a reference plane, use the pick lines or draw along the front and notice I'm dragging it a long way out past that's because I want to be able to grab it easily I don't need to worry about this printing reference planes don't print now as soon as I have created it I've hit escape a couple of times I've selected it again and over here in the properties I'm going to call it front of reception this is just good only a good prompt for me when I'm looking for my work planes later. If you have a look over here in 3D, I'll just hide this ceiling for the moment. I'm right clicking. As I said, every time you draw in a plan view, it presumes that the work plane that we're working on is whatever plan that is, and it locks that in. However, at the moment, I'm going to be working in an elevation view. And it's going to ask me instead, what view do you want to be working in? So let me show you. At the moment, if I show you what work plane we've got, this is it. This is our work plane. We're currently sitting on the ground floor work plane. Now I'm going to change that. I'm going to, normally this prompts you as you go through. I just want to show you what we're about to do. Under work plane, I'm in the architecture tab here. Under work plane, set. I'm going to come to my drop down options here. I've got three. This is my preferred option because it's accurate. Can you see that now that we've given that reference plane a name, front of reception, it's available in my drop down menu. It won't be there unless it has been given a name. And this is the piece of paper or the reception desk. 
I'll just change that to hidden line that we're going to be drawing on. So that's the only difference to that extrusion. Normally we draw everything in plan. This time we still need to draw it at right angles to it, except that we're drawing on an elevation. So I'm going to set that back, just so you can see how it prompts you. I'm going to go to the front on elevation, and I'm going to select the family, edit in place, create an extrusion. Because I'm in an elevation and not a plan, it asks me to nominate the work plane. Front of reception, and OK. Copy that across from that end point to there, and I'll do that one more time. This time from the midpoint, which is the triangle, to the mid. Let's have another crack at that. Midpoint to the midpoint of the reception desk. I'm going to give it an extrusion start of zero because I actually do want it to sit right on the face of the reference plane I just created. And 40 mil was the overhang, so then theoretically all I need to go back if I want this to look right is 40 mil. Now the construction might be made of something deeper. That's all I'm worried about for today, making something look right in a rendering. Big green tick. I forgot to change the material, so let me just set that now. So that's paint black. Finish model. Looking good. So just to show you what I'm talking about, I'm going to come back to this plan view and finish the final two. I'm going to change it to a wireframe view. So it's either WF or I come down here and choose wireframe. And that's so I can work out where it needs to go. Edit in place, edit extrusion. All right, so another way of creating this rectangular prism. This one needs to be black, um, black paint as well. Big green tick. Finish the model, check it out. Oops. Okay, I could drag that. Yep, they're both good, so it's created in the same extrusion, they're both fine. Finish model. Change it to a realistic view. Okay, and now I'm going to come to my 3D camera view that I've just set up, and I'm going to hit the render button.